Today, guys, I have someone really, really interesting. I have Susan, who is a certified color analyst, right? That's so right. what she actually specializes in is actually looking at you, taking your skin tone, taking your undertones in consideration and kind of like giving you a palette that actually makes you look good. And oftentimes I used to go and buy clothes and I always thought it was my fault that these clothes are not looking good on me. But in reality, I was just really bad at choosing the color that's right for me. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Susan, for make, taking the time to come here. Oh, thank so, you for having me. Yeah. Uh, so tell me a little bit about just how some colors just look so bad on some people and looks <laughs> amazing on a certain other people. Okay. Well, um, color analysis is all about really choosing color, like finding the best colors that harmonize with our natural coloring and with our complexion. Mm. So um, when you are choosing a color that harmonizes with you, that works for your skin tone, your undertone, your coloring, those colors will make you more vibrant. They'll make you brighter. They'll actually make you look younger. They'll diminish imperfections. Whereas when wow. we are wearing the colors that don't align with us, they don't harmonize with us, they don't match our coloring, they can actually mm -hmm. have like the opposite effect and they can make us look tired. They can make us look dull. They can mm -hmm. bring about imperfections, like um, make maybe lines or um, I don't know, scarring, all these kinds of things, dark circles. They'll actually make those things look more pronounced when we're wearing the wrong colors. And it's really wow. fascinating because what colors can look amazing on one person can yeah. have the opposite effect on another person. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how did you like go about uh, discovering this field and then getting even certified in this world? Because I only came to know about this field just like a couple months ago that this yeah. even existed. Well, I think that this has become like more and more popular, like just even, I think even in this last year in itself, like if you like in on Instagram and on TikTok, it's just mm. become such a popular topic. It, but color analysis like first kind of came through and it became it was a popular it became really popular in the early 80s um, yeah. there was a book that was published color me beautiful and then people wow. started coming into color analysis and it became like this well-known thing and at that time there was just four seasons and it's evolved since then but then you know how it is like everything old becomes new again and it cycles yeah. back and I think it's find it found its popularity again and for me, um, I think what happened was like early on uh, during COVID, I was like doing some reflection as I think, like some self-reflection as I think a lot of us were. And mm -hmm. I was really thinking about, you know, like what I was feeling like I was like living in my comfort zone. That was one thing I reflected on and I realized. And the other thing wow. is I realized that I wasn't necessarily engaging in some of my true interests that were mm. really interesting to me and like things that I wanted to know more about. I just wasn't, I was kind of like not really paying yeah. attention to those things. And something that I've always been interested in and like, just, I don't even remember when it started. It's just been like, I feel like my whole life. It's just mm -hmm. like, what is it that makes something suit somebody? What is it that mm. makes it work? And what is it that like those types of things have always really interested in, interested me. I've always taken notice of those things. And at the same time, I was thinking, like, what is it that I really like? And I've always worked one-on-one um, -on -one with people in a wow. helping role. And that's kind of like, that's just aligns me. That's just who I am. I've always been a helper who's worked yeah. with people individually. So I started doing this, like, deep dive, like, into, into color. Mm. Because I, I'm, I love color. I'm kind of artistic. I'm creative. And I know that color has a thing with mm. how we look. And as I was doing my deep dive, it just kind of, it just made sense to like, okay, I can combine color analysis, which I love and it's fun and so interesting to me with my other passion, which is, and my comfort, I guess not something that I've always done is just help people on an individual yeah. basis. That's just kind of where I've built my life around. And so to bring them together and then help people wow. in a way to feel more confident um, and then choose colors that bring out the best in them. So it's kind of fun for me. And it's like, it aligns with me. So that's kind of how it came to be for me. Yeah, that's so interesting because it's not just about 
choosing the right colors that look good. It's all, also about harmonizing your inner world and the outer world, you know, even if, yes. you, yeah, even if you feel good, you need to like wear colors that kind of like uh, expresses that. Yes, yes, absolutely. We have to harmonize with like what we feel inside will be expressed on the outside. And when we are like, when those two things are conflicting and we're not harmonizing, we're not even like, we're not feeling great about ourselves. I think when that happens, yeah. 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 We're not having the confidence we deserve to have. Yeah. And it's just because you're choosing colors that is just, uh, is not suiting you that well. That's right. And sometimes we don't even know why we're doing it. Like we're just, sometimes we feel that it's off. But we don't yeah. exactly know why we're not paying attention to why, um, yeah. or even that something doesn't feel right, but we're not even realizing that, oh, maybe this is the color. Yeah. Just buy different color shirts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think what's uh, interesting is I always thought I was like a warm undertone, right? And yeah. I have my friend who also likes the cold undertone and he's actually warm, right? Yeah. And it's so funny. And I don't know if this is like a pattern or something that... I personally am gravitated towards people who are like wearing this warm colors, right? Mm -hmm. When I look at these people who are wearing warm colors and I'm thinking, wow, they look amazing, right? Right. And, and then so do you I try think to, like, that buy... you want to wear warm colors yourself? No, I, that's why I thought I always wanted to wear warm colors and I have to like look good in warm colors because the yeah. colors I actually liked on other people yeah. were warm usually. Yeah. But I actually, I, I'm cold, so. Yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting how, like, I think like sometimes we just kind of, we have like certain ideas about colors or we even like look at images of celebrities or people we kind of look up to image wise. And we say, oh, like, I love this celebrity. I love their look. And they always are looking good in these colors. So if I wear these colors, then maybe I'll look good too, but it doesn't, yeah, always, exactly. it doesn't that... always work like that. And then you're like, Oh, like how come I don't look as good as that celebrity? Like they're so much like, and but it's not that. It's just that they're wearing the colors that align with them, and you should be wearing the colors that align with you. Yeah. So how many such palettes are there in total? Um, Possible palettes. So well, it depends on what system you use. So in like the original system, there were four, just the four seasons, um, and mm -hmm. then the system evolved, um, and now it's evolved so much that there's different systems that different color analysis use. So there's like, there's four seasons, there's 12 seasons, there's 16 seasons, and there's even 18 seasons. Wow. So kind of, it's been categorized in different ways, but they're pretty like, you'll still pretty much get the one that suits you, but there, there are different systems that have evolved from it. So the one that you're using is the 16, right? Yes. Yeah, I use so, the 16. So you have like the four seasons, which like the summer, autumn, winter, and spring. Yes. And then you have like the four sub-seasons within them. Absolutely, exactly. Yeah, because you can be, say, a winter, but not all winters are the same type of winter. <laughs> mm. What do you mean by that? So like there's different, um, like so within winters, there could be like a more like darker, deeper version of a winter or there could be a lighter version of a winter. Um, and then the in-betweens of that as well. Even if you're a summer, there could be, like you're still relatively in the same color range, but just like slightly different. Like maybe more on the lighter end, or maybe more mm. on the brighter end, or maybe more on the muted end. Well, yeah. So what it sounds like is that there is like this spectrum of colors. Yeah. And then you have like this spectrum divided into four. Yes. And then within that, spectrum you're again subdividing into like four other subspectrums. yes yes exactly exactly so it's a pretty detailed process that we go through but then in the end you really get to learn like what like not only just learn but people I think really see the difference that it makes and it's really like amazing because like when you see like the wrong color versus the right color like it almost looks like you're wearing like a filter comes across your face. Like that's how yeah. powerful it can be. Yeah. I yeah. I also found that process super, it's not fascinating. It's almost like a magic trick for me. It is. Yeah, exactly. I felt like it's like a magic trick. And sometimes like, um, like it's like, whoa, like what just happened? Like, it looks like I'm wearing makeup or like, oh my gosh, what happened? Like this just looks awful. <laughs> yeah. 
and it's so interesting as well because uh, i always look good in silver but i think yeah. culturally in india most people wear gold yeah my father yeah. has a gold chain like you know yes. everyone is like wearing gold my mom is like wearing gold right yeah. so yeah. i assume i should look good in gold but i don't yeah yeah i know me neither i don't look it i don't look like gold i look better <laughs> so. yeah so yeah then i then you also have like oh but also you have like this yellow lights which are which is so crazy like i i i bought like this uh, shirt in the showroom and they had like a lot of yellow lights which uh, kind of like changed the color of how yes. it's supposed to look good on you and mm-hmm. i feel that's kind of like a tactic they use as well just using the same theory but they yeah. just shine a lot of yellow lights so in the store you kind of like look good because yeah. it's all like kind of like yellowing out everything it's like dimmed it yeah yeah you can't tell. they do that a lot in them like uh in change rooms and like stores where they sell bathing suits you kind of look in the mirror you can't really tell you're like oh I look great and then you come home and like why does my mirror look so different than that's <laughs> yeah and they have like this lot of like either like super yellow or super like blue coloring yeah. on you yeah so you kind yeah. of like look good in that certain light yeah but you don't look in like a normal light that's right so I always wonder like why is this I don't I always thought there must be something wrong with my understanding of color <laughs> and I think the most popular advice that I, I even had some friends give me is that, yeah, just go to a store, look at the clothes you like. And if put it on, if it looks good, it looks good. If it doesn't look good, it doesn't look good, you know. Mm-hmm. And for me, it was like, I cannot tell, honestly, which one looks yeah, good. Yeah, uh, well, part of that is like, we're also kind of like old things when, like for me, like I know like I was kind of like, followed certain rules growing up that I was just told by maybe like my mom or my friends or I'd heard on TV or I'd read somewhere and and I just kind of have just been following these rules but like not really thinking about why so like um so then when I go in a store I like will just kind of pick up a shirt because I've always been told like oh this is a good color for you you know but then sometimes you bring home and you're like oh but I don't really see it. Like something seems off. It's not working. So it's interesting, like kind of why we gravitate or we see the picture of the model or the mannequin in the store and like, it just looks really good. So we're like, oh, that looks good. It it should look good. Or like the same thing, like, let's say you're picking out, like, let's say you're buying a suit and then you go by, like you get, you look at the shirt in the store, you get the blazer and then you kind of put them together and then you go to the ties and then you match the tie on it. It all looks good. And then you put it on like, yeah, the outfit looks good but then when you're looking at your whole self in the mirror you might be thinking but something feels off right and it could be that you just matched all the clothes to each other but you haven't matched them to the most important part of the outfit which is you (laughs) yeah it's so interesting (laughs) yeah yeah I also feel like uh, there are certain seasons that almost like embody a certain uh, personality as well Yes. For example, I feel winter looks very elegant on people. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think our um, it's interesting because there there is a theory that our coloring, like does a, like our our season does align with certain personality types. So, like just with wow. the four seasons. So, if you're a winter, summer, or spring, or autumn, um, that it does align with a personality. Um, and it, and, you know, at first when I learned about this, I was a little bit skeptical. I was like, oh, I don't know about that. Like, I'll just kind of take this with a with a <laughs> grain of salt. <laughs> but yeah. I, like over time, I've kind of realized that there is like really some truth to that. Like, and there is an image that kind of goes along with each season. So like, yeah, winters are kind of very elegant, striking, dramatic kind of look, yeah. look to them. Whereas a... Um, a summer has a very soft natural sensitive nurturing look to them so it's different and a lot of times you'll see that kind of aligns with personalities as well I mean not exactly yeah yeah. there are elements that will align with your personality yeah Uh, yeah earlier you mentioned there were like some rules that you learned growing up what were they yeah Oh, okay. So for example and they weren't correct actually they're just like rules I kind of went by so for example, like my mom always used to tell me, like you have brown hair. So always wear like yellow is a great color for you because your your brown hair looks really nice against yellow. So mm. um I would whenever I saw yellow, I would be like, oh, this this is a good color. Like so I would like buy yellow a lot. <laughs> oh. <laughs> or, um, or for example, um 
you know, I remember this is another thing. Like my mom, there's was like this specific shade of pink she didn't like. I don't know for whatever reason she didn't like that color. Maybe it didn't look good on her. I don't know where it came from, but she always told me like, oh no, don't buy that color. It's a terrible color. Never buy that color. Now, but I always liked that color. And every time I wanted to buy it, she's like, don't buy it. Oh no. Now I realize like that was actually a really good color for her. <laughs> <laughs> or even yeah. with, like with reds. Um like I've been told by like many, like many times just over my life, oh, red suits you so much. You should wear red. Red is a great color for you. Um, like I have cousins and stuff who are like, you should wear red. So then I'm like, okay, I'll 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 wear red. I would go out and I would like buy something red. And then I would buy something red. I'm like, I don't know why they keep telling me red looks good on me. Like this doesn't look so good. Like I don't get it. But I would just buy it anyways, because this is what I've been told. But now what I understand is that there's different type, like sh- different type types of red. There are cool reds and there yeah. are warm reds. And like I was just going to the store and picking out a random red that was the wrong red for me. And I was like, well, I don't understand why you tell me red looks good for me. It doesn't. <laughs> that's so crazy. I feel, yeah, that's so interesting because most people I feel are so limited in their vocabulary itself. Yeah. the colors. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like there's two, like there's red, there's like a tomato red and there's like a raspberry red. So, yeah. and they're very different and they'll do two very different things to my coloring. But so it's still interesting, like these rules and things that I had gone by for yeah. a long time, like, like they didn't work <laughs> and like yellow is not a great color for me, you know, but even though it matches the, like my hair color. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's so true because uh, uh, I I always heard, oh, if you're wearing red, that means uh, it's a sign of confidence, you know, you look really yeah. confident. But when yeah. I, I used to like go buy like a spring red, you know, yeah, I always yeah. used to look like a Canada Tire employee. And I'm like, <laughs> why, why, why is this not looking good on me? You know, maybe red isn't my color is what I was always thinking. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, there's also something to like what you just said too, like with um, like red makes you, what, what was it that you said? Like makes you look um, confident. Confident. Think- yeah. So there are different colors that like, for, like bring about different moods too Mm. like and we see that all the time being used in like society like when we walk into a a medical building and like the waiting rooms are kind of like more subdued more calming colors like you're not going to see like the waiting room of your doctor's office usually isn't like painted a bright orange yeah (laughs) you know what I mean versus like a daycare setting they're going to use bright colors um a law office it's going to be deep dark tones that elicit like the idea of like being serious and um mm. being um authority almost yeah authority being competent um versus maybe a spa that's going to use very pastel light airy colors mm. to help you relax um so colors do have psychology to them and when we wear certain colors they're also gonna give certain like on a subconscious level they're going to give out certain messages and yeah. they're going to help us and when we see ourselves in these colors we'll pass by ourselves in these colors and feel different too. Um, like for example, yeah. like let's say if you see a clown wearing these bright colors, mm-hmm. you're going to feel, yeah. it, it gives a certain message to you. And you're like, okay, this is a bright, colorful, happy person. A judge wearing black and white, you're going to look at them and be like, okay, this is like more serious, more authority. So they give messages with the clothes they wear. Like, can you imagine wow. if they were like flipped? <laughs> yeah, know? that would be really crazy. Yeah, yeah, it'd be really weird to see a judge wearing like a clown's color. Mm. And, um but yeah. then when we wear certain colors we will feel certain feelings as well when we see ourselves in those colors yeah and the same thing when someone like say blue for example is a very kind of color of loyalty trustworthiness yeah comments, you know and, and red is like um has a very kind of powerful yeah. message to it as well so it's so it's yeah i remember one time I actually wore like this blue shirt and I looked sick. Yeah. Yeah. I literally looked like I was sick. And yeah. I never, I wore it once. And I never wore it since because, you know, mm-hmm. I, I looked sick, of course. Yeah. It was probably but, the wrong blue for you. Yeah. It's a wrong blue. And uh, yeah, it's so crazy because the kind of colors I'm attracted by is the ones. Uh, have you seen like the Grand Budapest Hotel? The what? Sorry. Uh, the Grand Budapest Hotel. No. It's like a movie. It has like a lot oh. of pastel colors and stuff oh, like that. Oh, okay. No, I haven't seen it. No. 
it's a, it's a lot of like the spring super bright pastel colors um, is always what i thought look good on people wow it's such a uh, pop is yeah, pops yeah. out so it's much it's a great it's a, such a pop of color yeah yeah and oh i, I should like try this pastel i don't know literally like the the worst colors i could choose is what i think look good on people yeah, you know yeah yeah all the yeah. elegant colors and i'm like no nah, because plus i feel winters are like so uh it's there you kind of look look elegant but i very few times it actually like has this quality of trying to like grab your attention you know well winters are kind of like it's not, a lot of the winter palette like looks very kind of sophisticated Mm, and yeah. yeah elegant can be dramatic but winters can also they also have like very bright coloring in them too but just like more like bright jewelry kind of tones more than like these like springy kind of fun bright light colors yeah that's so interesting i i also feel like just by wearing right colors it has like almost like a healing effect on you mhm you know? i think so too yeah yeah like if like if you I think it's like in two ways. Like if you wear if you're always wearing like the wrong type of colors that are like kind of like like just taking the color away from your face, washing you out, dulling you and like kind of making you look tired. And if you're always looking in the mirror and you see yourself looking like that, I think you're you're like, "Oh, like why do I always look so tired? Like, oh, I like I look I'm looking older." You know, because you're seeing yourself in these wrong colors. and you're not yeah. really seeing the true you you're just seeing these colors working against you so mm. you know i think it can affect the way we feel um cuz then when we look tired you're like well maybe i am tired like i'm looking old like am i old like you know I mean? <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're you're getting these messages and you're internalizing them so i think that's like in one way but if you're wearing these like bright color or not bright colors but the right colors for you that are making you brighter you you kind of feel like oh okay no i do see a healthy glow in me and i think that that has a psychological impact on how we feel inside yeah. and then so same true. thing with just the colors we choose like if i'm always wearing gray and brown say and i'm feeling down and i want to come out of that kind of down feeling that i'm in but all i see myself when i pass a mirror is gray and brown even if they're the right gray and brown for me yeah. i'm not going to cheer myself up by seeing myself in those colors that's how i exactly felt because i i kind of always wore black but mm-hmm. i'm already a darker person and i'm like okay i kind of like no black works for me but i want to like find more colors you know yeah. that actually look good definitely yeah because like colors bring us to life like just wear and it can be boring just wearing black all the time and like i said like it gives like certain messages you know um yeah you want to be able to use your colors to kind of give the message you want to send to the world yeah it's almost like you're using uh, the colors as a tool to kind of express how you're actually feeling in that moment yeah exactly and it'll and like it's just like yeah exactly express how you're feeling in that moment or on that day yeah 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 I, that's so interesting so So let's say a person now sadly you don't do the online coaching anymore which I got lucky and I yeah. got in uh, right <laughs> Maybe in. I'll bring it back we'll see we'll see for now <laughs> We'll see for now right yeah, So if yeah. a person has to kind of try to figure out figure this out for your themselves and stuff like that what is like some advice or tips you can give them like Um okay well I would say there's like three things that they could do One is like you know how we talked about like I was given some rules <laughs> and I think yeah. we all kind of have those kind of things that we have grown up with over time so really reflect on what are the rules and messages that you've been given and just kind of following blindly right because mm-hmm. I was following by yellow blindly I wasn't even questioning it I was like well my mom told me by yellow so I'm just buying yellow so kind of yeah. reflect on like what are some of the rules that you've been living by and reflect on are am i just why am i following those rules like are they re- do i really feel good when i wear those when i follow those rules yeah or do i see something different so kind of reflecting on things that we've been told or messages we've believed in kind of as we've gone on um so i would say like that's like a really big indication like first really reflect and you know analyze what have you been doing and why have you been doing that right mm. or is there like a certain celebrity you've always kind of followed but like 
why are you following what they look like? You know? yeah. So kind of doing that reflect that self-reflection piece, I think is big. Um, and the second thing I think is just kind of paying attention. And you talked about this a lot, like paying attention to how you feel when you are wearing certain colors. So you, I think you had mentioned like wearing gold, um, yeah. but, and like, I don't think that you've always, yeah. you kind of felt it was off for you. Right. Yeah. So when you are wearing something like just really have like pay attention, like, do you feel like when you wear this, like, do you feel like you need to like do something with your fair hair? Do you feel like you need to put on another layer? Are you feeling like you need to go and grab some more lipstick or blush? Like, do you yeah. feel like, do you feel like you need a tan? So kind of like paying attention to these things. And if you're feeling that way, something is off about these colors that you're choosing. Wow. Right. Um, so I think paying attention, like really kind of like being open to listening to yourself. Mm. <laughs> right. So I'd say like, those are like two really important things. Um, and the third thing is um, like with color analysis, one of the big things is you want the colors to like work for you, to brighten you. Um, to harmonize with you, but you also don't want colors to wear you. You want to be wearing the colors. So wow. for That's example, so yeah, like you don't want to like walk in when you walk into a room, let's say you walk in for like a, a job interview or at a dinner party or anything like that. Yeah. You want like your face to be the center of attention of your mm. ensemble. You want the focus to be on you, not on the sweater that you're wearing. So you want to be wearing the sweater. You don't want the sweater to be wearing you. Um, wow. So like, you know, have you ever, I don't know, like met someone and spoken to them and you're like just focusing on like, wow, like this is a really, a really bright green shirt they put on. <laughs> and you're like distracted <laughs> by the shirt. Yeah. And often like we'll say something like, oh, wow, like I love that color green or I love that color blue. That's an awesome blue shirt. But that's different than hearing, wow, that shirt looks so good on you. <laughs> you know, like those are yeah. two different ways. Oh my gosh, that blue looks really good on you. So we don't want, so here's a tip. Like if you were to put on a shirt and then it's like, it's called the blink test. So if you were to close your eyes and then open them and then see what is the first thing you notice when you first open your eyes and you're looking in the mirror is the first thing that stands out yeah. in the mirror, your the what you're wearing or is it your face and if the first thing that your eye gets drawn towards is the color then that color is too overpowering for you it's not the right color um but if you're if you open your eyes and you see your face that's mm. an indication that the color you are you can wear that color yeah. or it's a color that you can wear not necessarily not necessarily going to be the right color but it's not overpowering you yeah and i think this is such a powerful concept because I remember the first the way I came across this is like my friend I always kind of knew about color analysis I kind of studied warm undertone cold undertone I did the self-diagnosis and I thought yeah I'm Indian my veins you can like barely see my <laughs> veins you know so I'm like it's a blue vein black I mean green vein I don't know I think it's like mm -hmm. kind of green so I just thought yeah. it was warm so I, I kind of like always had the back of my mind that it is, there's a possibility of you looking amazing if you just chose the right colors, right? Yeah. yeah. My friend uh, did like a coaching and he's like, yeah, I did this color analysis thing, this different seasons thing. And, you know, I, I bought like an entire new wardrobe and this is my favorite shirt. And he like showed me like this uh, kind of like a golden shirt. And I yeah. looked at the shirt and I thought, nah, that shirt looks mad. You know, that shirt kind of like looks okay. And then he wore it. And yeah. he looked amazing. Like he popped out. Yeah. And I thought, yeah. oh my God, this is I like know, it's, it's amazing what the right color will do. It is amazing. Yeah. 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 And you can like, I think a lot of times, like honestly, people are doing a lot of the right, like they are attracted towards the right things. Like more often than not, you will be attracted towards those right colors that suit you because you kind of get a sense that this looks really good on you. You know, mm -hmm. but people don't always invest in the right colors for whatever reason, because of whatever they've seen in the advertisements or the way this the store is displaying it. But when I like whenever I'm doing an analysis on someone, it's it's pretty often that someone will say like, oh, no, I don't like those colors. I'm like, OK, good, because those yeah. colors <laughs> don't work on you. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And uh, and also, I, do you how strongly do you feel about the gold and silver test? Because I always looked, I thought I liked silver jewelry, 
and I thought that kind of like look good on me. But I yeah. always kind of like this, like I didn't give it that much thought because it's just jewelry, right? Yeah. But in the end, for me, the silver was the I think the biggest indicator that I was like the other side. Yeah, I think gold. that the gold and silver are big indicators. I think they're pretty easy way. Like for me, I I think it's a good test. Um, but I I can see why for some people it would be hard to tell with jewelry, just because a lot of times jewelry is very delicate and mm-hmm. it doesn't have a massive like impact on our face the way like the color shirt will wear. Like I think yeah. we we get feelings off the jewelry, but they're not going to be as unless you have like a like a swatch like something like say like like this you know, <laughs> to like really put against you um, yeah, yeah. like this would show you more than just like a little tiny like chain <laughs> yeah, but yeah, often yeah when I use like the sil- like the silver and gold the different golds and different like silver swatches they're pretty big indicators can I ask you something? Is there any sure. possibility where you can like show a color, like a swatch that like looks good on you and a swatch that doesn't look good on you? Because I think even visually you just see like a difference. Yeah, sure. I can. Give me, give me one second. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'll kind of show you with these flags that I have. Um, mm-hmm. Just an example of like what doesn't work on me and what does, what does. So here's an example of how I look with these colors. And like, these are nice colors and like looking in the mirror, like maybe I would find a shirt or I would go to a store and I would, I'd like, I actually like these colors and I would buy these, but you can see the effect it has on my face when I compare and color analysis is a lot about how one thing looks. It's all like comparing relative things until we can figure out what is works best. So if you look at me with this and if I were to take this and remove it and you see the colors underneath, yeah you see how it, these are so much yeah. more harmonizing with me and if I was wearing like a dress with all these colors would I wear this or this do you see how this has like a more yellowing effect yeah. on me yeah your face is literally becoming more yellow and I think if I do like the blink test if I just blink really fast I think the yellow catches my eye first like this, yeah mm-hmm. it like steals the show almost right like the yellow is not versus yeah this totally like this brightens me more it makes me more clear yeah I feel like I can I feel like your face is popping out more yeah yeah this is much better yeah and like certain colors will actually like not pop out at you but they'll actually even like diminish you so if you look at these well these are fine but they kind of um they're too they're almost like drowned give me one second I'm sorry yeah go on okay these ones almost wash me out compared yeah to these so these are like some this is a winter palette this is summer so can you like tell me the differences because I can see something is like bad but I can't exactly say what is between which one the first one the the summer and this one oh okay so this is winter yeah that's um, which is good for me and then this is a, a summer so the winter yeah. is cool, it's deep, and it's bright. Wow. Now, the summer is also cool, but instead of deep, it's light. And instead oh. of bright, it's going to be soft. So the coolness is the same, mm. but yeah. it's too light for me. It's too light and it's too soft. This is yeah. deeper and brighter. Yeah, that looks much better. Yeah, yeah it definitely. looks much better. And the first one I did, which is the spring is bright like the winter but it's warm it's not cool and it's light instead of deep yeah so yeah like, i can see your face becoming more yellow and i can see like how those colors are like grabbing my attention so it's very yeah. hard to look at your face yeah whereas here it's like it's much... one image it's like harmony like the way you i i try to describe it is like picture your your face was like a portrait like a painting that you bought like you bought a painting That is Mm -hmm. your face. And then now you want to take this painting and you want to frame it on the wall and you want to put matting on it and put a frame on the wall. What color matting would you choose for that frame, for that Mm -hmm. that portrait? Would you choose matting that stands out more than the painting itself? You don't want that. You don't want the color to overtake the person. And then you want to choose matting that harmonizes with the painting. Like these would be, I would maybe mat with like, you know what I mean? Like you would pick this. I wouldn't, because it doesn't harmonize. This doesn't harmonize with me. I wouldn't 
if this was the painting, I wouldn't yeah. matter this. So that's kind of how you can think about it. When we think that's of so harmony. interesting how like a color can just immediately like affect you like that. Yeah, it is. It is it's actually crazy. And I don't know if you, you can see the effects here. Like I can see screen. it actually. Yeah, but in the mirror, like it literally looks like a filter has come over <laughs> the face. Or it looks like, whoa, did we just put on foundation or did we just put on powder? Because everything yeah. just changed. Yeah. Also, I think it's so important because it's not just what your skin color looks externally. It's almost like the undertones of the skin that you're actually yeah, taking right. into account. That's right. Because yeah. I have olive skin. So I think olive is like known to be like seen as warm. Right. So I've been yeah. told in my life. That's another thing. I've been told, oh, you're so warm because you have like olive looking skin. Yeah. I'm actually, my undertone is actually cool. But with color analysis, that's it's crazy. really easy. When, with the right drapes, with these cool and warm drapes, it's, it's, uh, it's undeniable. Like they say the drapes don't lie. And it's true. The drapes don't lie. <laughs> wow. That's so interesting. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so what can a person really do? Like there's like some practical, the blink test is one, the, the silver and gold is another one, right? Yeah. Of course, silver and getting gold. in touch with someone who's. Uh, yeah. Getting like getting, one. I mean, a lot of people will try, like there's a lot of co online color analysis, uh, like tools now and like apps that you can do. Um, the, all, I, I think like for some people they do work. And then I think for others, they don't um, because it always kind of also depends on like the lighting that you, that you are in Yeah. Um, when you are doing that, when you're doing the app. So sometimes I find like, like people have said they've tried it and, but they're, they just don't feel right about like, they've come and they're like, I don't know about the results. Like it just still doesn't feel right to me. So um, I think with um, color analysis, like those tools are great, but they'll just kind of spit out a color at you. Like they'll just mm. tell you what your color is. But like, I think with an analysis, you really get to see one by one how the colors work. Because like when I do an analysis on someone, it's just really important for me for them to, to see what I see. And we go slow until they can see the effects of the colors. Sometimes you don't see it right away. Because um, you have to understand it. You have to really see it so that when you go you you know what you're doing in the store you know or what you're doing yeah. when you're looking in your wardrobe but just to kind of be told I don't think it has the same effect and sometimes you don't even know if it's they're telling you the right thing because you don't know if the picture you chose is accurate or if it was in yeah. the best lighting yeah yeah that makes a lot of sense the, the what I was even surprised about is apart from like choosing the right palette the the one more thing I was super confused about in clothes is just the patterns and how do you like choose the right patterns and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Well, so for the patterns, it's really interesting because um, like patterns will come in all sorts of like different colors, but you just kind of go by the 80, 20 rule in patterns. So as long as like 80% of that pattern is in your color palette, you can wear that pattern. So if I am wearing like, if I wear like a cool colored, um, I don't know, floral scarf or something, yeah. Um, you know, 80% of those flowers should be in my winter palette. 20% can be something else and it won't really make it, it, it I can still wear it. It'll still look good. Um, but like winters are a lot are like, they can handle a lot of, I mean, I think patterns are a lot of personal preference because you have to wear the patterns yeah. that kind of speak to you. But like in a general sense, like winters can, are usually can take like geometric patterns really well because they have these bold defined edges and a mm. lot of winters have a lot of contrast in them. So these like bold defined edges like work well with the contrast in a winter. Um, whereas like summers are, they have like a very soft and gentle flowy look wow. to them. So harmonizing with like a gentle floral or flowy pattern usually harmonizes well with summers. And then springs have this like bright, colorful palette to them like very kind of yeah. bright cheerful palette um so things like i don't know polka dots or um like spirals or six like wow. more kind of fun pattern would kind of harmonize yeah. well with spring and then autumns are like you think of autumns as like earthy tones yeah. um deep tones so a lot of times like these nature kind of animal prints nature prints will go along with autumn but i don't think you will, we always have to follow this like rule like we kind of have to go with our personality and what that says too. Like, I really like floral patterns. I really like 
I like wearing floral, so I'll still wear florals. Yeah. You know what I mean? As long as they're in the winter colors. But I yeah, can that's... handle geometric prints pretty well because I'm winter. Wow. And it's all it's also like I feel once you understand the color palettes and the kind of patterns that look good on you, you can have like more timeless pieces and not you get can. caught in the fast fashion. Fast fashion. Know? Yeah, because I think that like a lot of people will not a lot like all of us will kind of do this sometimes like we get caught up in like what we see in a trend in the ads in the prints and social media what we see like in the store window and we're like oh we just want to look like that but yeah. like in reality like we will look and feel our best when we are listening to what we've been given and like kind of leaning into that and embracing what we've been given and harmonizing with our true and natural coloring yeah and that's where the color analysis comes in like really I feel like it can give people like a lot of confidence because suddenly you see that you don't need to work against what you are you just like lean into what you are and you will become the most beautiful confident version of yourself yeah so crazy yeah it is and it, it can and like I don't know I don't really I think it makes like shopping like much better, like much easier because it's so easy now to walk away yeah. from an item. Like even if it's on clearance, like, you can still walk away from it because like you're like, oh, but it's only like whatever, it's 50% off. But if it, the color <laughs> is going to bring you down, what's yeah. the point in doing it? Like we're all trying to do all these things like brightening creams and doing this and doing yeah. that why not just it's just as easy as just picking the right shirt over the wrong shirt it really yeah. is such an effortless way to feel good about yourself it's like no, an investment I, that you will use forever i feel I, yeah and i think for, as as like from a guy's perspective i think this is like really the most you can do without actually going the makeup route or like yeah for sure because a lot of guys don't wear makeup like yeah as my and like the other thing like for um I mean some guys have long hair but like I see more girls with like long hair and like if you have the right color long hair and you wear the wrong color like let's say I wear this which is not great for me but I put my hair all around me it helps make the color wow. it makes it helps right but if I were to put my hair up in a ponytail all I have is the color um yeah then that's all I have. Like, I can't do anything else, but at least with long hair, I can bring it. But like, say for you, for example, you have short hair. It's not like, there's nothing you, you can't can do hide with your the hair. Imperfection. You can't like bring your hair around you to hide. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, like, I don't know, or I can say like, okay, well, I'll just go put some lipstick on today or I'll put some maybe more concealer on. Mm. Or, and we feel sometimes when we wear the wrong colors, we should do that. But for a guy who's like, really isn't wearing any makeup doesn't have this like long hair to drape the shirt is so important just the color shirt will make such yeah. an impact and you don't have that many like fashion items as well it's just have like a button down shirt like a t-shirt and then you yeah know. yeah and there's a lot you can do with like the even the way you layer your clothes like a lot of guys mm. like to wear layers uh, but even the way you layer them like you can be taught how to do that with your color analysis. Like it can be very powerful. I think for men, especially because they're not wearing a lot of makeup and doing a lot of hairstyles yeah. and putting on earrings and big necklaces to distract from the color. Like there's so many things that um, I feel are accessible in female clothing, <laughs> you know, yeah. that aren't given in the, in the men's, like even say black, for example, um, if black is not the greatest color on you, um, you could wear black lace, you could wear sheer lace. Like there's so many things, wow. but you see that more in the women's section than you do in the yeah, men's. Yeah, like men's right? have nothing in them. And there's I always much. hated shopping just because, you know, I didn't know how to like buy clothes. Yeah. So shopping was always like a show for me. And yeah. it was like a yearly thing for me, you know, yeah. yearly or two years, I, you know. I think yeah. that's probably like pretty, t like I bet you there's a lot of guys who could. Yeah. <laughs> sympathize with you on that yeah so just knowing my palette i was like oh so this this color kind of like looks good on me this one doesn't look go good yeah. on me and then i can have like a selection of like shirts of colors that look good on me and then i can yes. like pick and choose like designs that's right because if all you were doing is putting on a shirt then like that shirt better be the right shirt that's doing that's working for you and you're investing yeah. your money in that shirt 
So why not have that shirt look as good as you as on you as possible? Yeah. Yeah, I do feel like at least from I don't know like a normal guy's uh, wardrobe, but I think if a guy buys like hundred shirts, I think only like ten of them would actually look good on him, and only ten of uh-huh. that he'll actually keep wearing because right. like someone, some randomly like accidentally like complimented them or something like that. I'm like, oh, oh so they keep that, on repeating that shirt. Yeah, so, okay, I <laughs> know for knowing. a fact that someone <laughs> out there you know thinks it's really good, so I gotta like yeah. keep <laughs> wearing this, you know. So, yeah that makes a lot of sense or maybe they've been given it as a gift they're like okay I'll just wear this every time I see this person yeah yeah and it's uh, yeah I never knew yeah like, like, like even to like recognize that something looks good on you or not is also like another not just looks good on you looks good on others or not is also like another skill I feel yeah yeah and it, it's funny like now that um like I know it like uh, it, it you can like see like very clearly like what is working and what is not working. Mm. Yeah. It's like, once you see it, you can't unsee it. <laughs> yeah. And I think what's fascinating is that some, even like actor, actresses also don't wear like the right colors all the time. No, they don't all the time. They really don't. And some of them you can see kind of a pattern color analysis done or they, I know they work with stylists, but I think sometimes they just wear things because it's for the dramatic effect. But you can see like there are actors and actresses that don't always like um uh Katy Perry is one I've seen her look amazing in some of the colors she's chosen yeah. and then some of them I'm like oh like she looks like these don't look good you know yeah. like, very contrasting I think she's the first woman I actually saw with like the green hair uh-huh oh yeah yeah but then again like that's for like dramatic effects and publicity mm. and and whatever I or maybe it's not but we never know what the motivation is with some of the, the celebrity yeah. fashions, but it's just important to, and sometimes like when you have your colors done, you can see what celebrities align with those colors. Um, mm-hmm. And then you can see, it's interesting because you can, like, if you know that you're a winter and you follow another winter celebrity, you can see how your colors work and how they don't on that person. Yeah. Or how yeah. the wrong colors don't work yeah yeah that's so interesting because i was actually watching like a show and i always like the kind of uh, clothes this guy wore but yeah. i i always thought nah that won't work on me you know because like, yeah well like, that's good oh. that you recognize that because i think some people yeah. don't they just see like someone that they you know look up to or admire like you know want to work towards looking like and they're like well i'm just gonna do what they do this is a different person, you know, and maybe if they did what looked good on you, they wouldn't look good. <laughs> true, true. I also feel like even like my rooms, I remember like my room in my house, not this one, like the one I used to live in. Mm-hmm. It had like this, uh, like this very like uh, lilac purple, you know, very mm-hmm. light lilac purple. Mm-hmm. And I kind of like, knew I liked the color but I never kind of like felt like I fit in the room I never felt I harmonized with the room you know what I mean right yes you feel yes. there is this room Isn't and that then amazing? Me. Yeah, Isn't yeah, that yeah amazing that you already felt that yeah 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 once I kind yeah. of like know this I kind of like kind of like can say okay I understand why this room doesn't yeah yeah so it's kind of like, like listening to your intuition and like it's, it kind yeah. of tells you yeah, yeah it's so crazy like how even like buildings can have like effects in the color of rooms totally. like even like food labels and like logos of companies they have an effect like if you think of like now it's all about like fresh food and like clean food and a lot of those kind of logos are like green and white because they have an effect on like there's a psychology of how they make us mm. feel it's a reason why they pick yeah. like white and green for those types of so labels yeah. yeah yeah so there the- is definitely like this psychological impact that we feel like on a subconscious level yeah that you can never actually put your finger to it's just no like, you never realize it you don't you don't always know like why it's that way but you're like but it is this way but you really have to s- stop and think you know or you, you can look at someone and think like wow they look so put together but like why are they looking put together it's because they're harmonizing with with themselves yeah and i think it also like gives you some sort of like misconceptions that you that are only now talking to you that I'm realizing I have had. For example, the confident red is always, I thought, like the Coca-Cola red. You know what mm, I mean? Right. So the Coca-Cola red is what I always thought is like the red that, you know, people point yeah. to when they think of like a confident red. But that's yes. like a warm, bright. It's yeah, like... it's not necessarily your red. 
It's not my red, yeah. No, no. So it's important to wear like I even always like I had this um I remember a long time ago I went to a wedding and I had this like black and white dress and I thought it would like look really cool with a bright red lipstick. So I just went to the store and I bought like this bright red like tomato lipstick and I put it on and it was looked so bad on me. Oh no. <laughs> and I was like, oh but I have brown hair. I should be able to wear red. Like it's totally not doesn't work that way. I needed the right I needed more of like a bluish red, like a berry red. Yeah. And what's surprising is is not that much investment in like terms of like learning. No, you know, like it just it's takes not like that one. much to learn. I don't think so. I don't think so. Like you just learn it once and then you use mm. it forever and you can use it in so many. Like I you know I think, you know, back when I my kids were like really young, we did uh we did a photo sh- like one of these family photo shoots that you do like in the forest yeah. <laughs> amongst the trees. Wow. You see these like yeah, yeah. like you're holding the baby in the air. Yeah, and yeah. you know, I I hold these photos like, you know, that was an investment to do that photo shoot. Mm. And it was an investment even to like figure out what I was going to wear and what everyone's going to wear in the pictures. I was the one who was picking what we're all going to wear. And of course I went and I picked this like yellow jacket because I had brown hair. So I thought I should wear a yellow jacket. Wow. <laughs> and so I wore this yellow coat. So I invested in the coat. We invested in the photos. And now these photos are going to, I I hold, I treasure the photos and I will always have them up on display because they're of my kids when they were little. When I look at myself in the photos, I don't like it. Oh no. You know? So if I like hadn't had known these things earlier on, there would have been like, you know, certain t- investments that would yeah. have paid off better. And if you yeah. know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, I do feel more confident in spending money and actually buying clothes, you know. Yes. Because yeah. for me, buying clothes always felt like a gamble. Yeah, and, and you don't gamble. want that. You don't want that. It's yeah, you're, we work too hard for for our money. For money. Uh, and like, yeah. And we go and why should we wear something that works against us? It just makes no sense when like re- literally you could pick the gray sweater over the brown sweater. It's just as easy as that. Just which one do you take to the counter? Or like mm. winter jackets, especially here in Canada. Like we winter jackets are a big investment. And usually we wear them for more Thousands than thousands dollars. Saying. Yeah. So for I some get- of them are definitely like up close to a thousand dollars. So why not pick the right one? Yeah. And it's kind of like very hard to like undo it as well. Yeah. And, and oh, yeah, especially like winter jackets, you don't want to like be like a floating head. You know what I mean? No, no, you don't want to be a floating head because, so, and that can happen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, luckily there are things you can do in the winter to accessorize, like you can get the right toque or you can get the right earmuffs. You can get the right color scarf. Uh-huh. Like you can, there are little things you can do with winter. <laughs> <laughs> to correct it. So, but if your initial investment can be the right one, like why not? True, 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 true. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, just like I, a nice feeling to know when you go to like that this is the right purchase. Like it's so often like, you know, I'm in a store and I'll see like someone like kind of contemplating like, should I get this one or this one? And I'm like, oh no, like they're picking the wrong one. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, I think the way most people buy clothes, I think even women I have like female friends, it's just like they go to a store and like I like it. I don't like it. I like it. I don't like it. I like it. I don't like yeah, it. I like it. Yeah, you know, yeah. that's how and what's making like you play. like it or don't like it. Like that goes back to the whole reflection piece. Why are, are you, is it, is it just that you don't like it? Is it that you, you have been told that it's a bad color and you've just kind of grown up feeling yeah. that like, what is it that's making you not like it? And maybe you won't even, because you've, you've been told that you won't even try it on. So you'll never know. That yeah. I, I was against like winter colors because I always thought it was like more very dull. Right. So I don't want to like look dull, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, dull color. colors are actually there. There, It's a brighter palette. It's, it has a brightness to it. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. But the ones that you showed, the one with the thing, I was definitely really bright. Oh, yeah. Yeah. In yeah. its and own then way. Within I that guess. winter, there's like a darker version of winter and then a lighter and brighter version of the winter, but they're all within, within winter. That's so fascinating. Yeah. I know. So- colors. It's amazing. I, I I'm still fascinated. Like every time, like that, the effects that it can have. It's it's unbelievable. Even like, and you think about even like, um, I mean, I mean, I don't think you get your hair done like in terms of like coloring and highlights, no, but no, no. like it's like every time you get your hair colored and highlighted, that's a it's a lot, you know. And then that's like all around you every day, all day. 
So it better yeah. be the right, it better be, it's, it'd be so much better if it just harmonized with your, with your face, you know, and I don't know, there's just something to like, like really embracing. Like, I know I went through this phase when I was like much younger that like my eyebrows were too dark because a lot of people didn't have a lot of the people I was around and like, didn't have like dark eyebrows like wow. me. So I was actually like bleaching them and making them look lighter so that it would look like the person that I thought looked good, but it looked terrible on me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh no. Yeah. I, so can I think see that. you really do have to embrace who we are, the gifts we've been given and yeah. just and lean into that and feel confident. And we see when we see how amazing like we can look and just listening to what we're naturally given like it, it can be very powerful and very empowering yeah and most of the stuff you like do like for example like getting your hair done it's like a 300 dollar investment yeah and every time it's like, like every what like eight weeks or six weeks yeah. that people go and do this over and over again yeah if you're getting like lighter shades then you gotta have the roots done again and again to like maintain the you know if you're going yeah. blonde or something yeah so there's a lot like we 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 do colors like yeah it's all it's it's in our lives. <laughs> so it might yeah. the bright the bright ones might as well be there if they're gonna be there. Yeah, I think we we spend so much money on things that involve us to like judge whether this is like a right color for us or not. Like even I feel tattoos, I feel it's like yeah. a kind of like if it's like a bad color, you know, like specific color yeah. tattoos, kind of like just stick out. Yeah, yeah. Like I guess like I think with like tattoos, you really want to make. Like it's an in, it's an investment, but it's also permanent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, also, color fades, you know. So it's kind of like. Yeah, that's true. You never know how it's gonna how it's gonna look. Or even now, I think like there's a lot of like I think it's called lip blush. Like people are like, it's almost like a tattoo of like coloring girls wow. put on their lips. But you want to make Damn. sure that even that is like the right one because you, wow. <laughs> you're committing to it. <laughs> that's so crazy i didn't i know that they had like that for the eyebrows so they kind yeah. of like tattoo eyebrows it's funny like the last um the last two um people i met that i was doing a color analysis with um yeah told me they were thinking of getting like this permanent lip wash and i don't know how permanent it is i don't know too much about it but i'm like oh okay well, good it must thing. hurt no i'm assuming like i have no idea i haven't <laughs> i haven't looked into it <laughs> yeah 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 i don't know but I just yeah, know but, that if you're going to do that, it's better. You're committing. You you are committing for some time to it. So you might as well commit to something that works for you. Yeah, I, I think a part of that just comes from you not knowing what colors look good on you. And you just want like have one color that looks good on you. That's like tried and tested and, you know, just want like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It comes I from mean, like, like a frustration, I feel. You know? Yeah, maybe. I mean, it could come from all sorts of things, but you just want to make sure that if you are going to do it, it makes sense for your for your color and not like not like maybe the color you saw on someone on instagram true true, true right true, true, true. If it, just because it looks good on someone doesn't mean it's going to look good on on you and that yeah i think we've all made that mistake <laughs> at some point yeah. in our lives yeah and i think what's interesting is once you like incorporate these colors into your life that like actually look good on you I think it also like elevates like the other qualities in your life because now you feel good about the way you look. Now you want to have other things that kind of like complements the way you yeah. look. And it's much more, it's, you can easily transfer that from like the blankets I'm buying to like, you know. Yeah, you can. Like even like um, you can use your color palette definitely like because they harmonize with you. So if even like, you know, you put some of those accent pieces in your home, like they harm, then your home harmonizes with you as well. And like yeah. I said, like there is like a personality element to it. So I don't know. It's just so good to live in harmony with who you are. True. Yeah. I think colors are definitely one way to like express the harmony that, yeah. that you want to yeah. like, you know. Yeah. Definitely. And I, yeah. And I think when we're feeling like good about ourselves and confident about ourselves and we're smiling and, um, you know, have our head up a little bit higher when we walk in a room, like, yeah, then the people who we talk to, like, they will interact with us on a different energy and then mm. in return we will have a different feeling inside and then we'll respond better so mm. like it's it's kind of cyclical yeah but it's so interesting as well because only now i'm realizing that out of all your five senses your visual field is the one of like the you know most impactful sense that a person has 
Oh and yeah. Most of it is just colors. Oh yeah. Cause like, even if you think about like when you meet someone and like, say you're, I don't know, you met someone like at a restaurant or something, and then you're describing them to your friend and you'll be like, Oh, like, remember that guy in the red shirt? Like, yeah, that's what yeah. you're going to remember. Like, usually we, that's what we remember is like, Oh yeah, that guy was that guy in the red shirt or, Oh yeah. That, that girl with the green glasses, you know, like you'll just remember the colors more than anything else. They're really impactful. Yeah, definitely. So I want to like wrap this up, but uh, so I know people can't uh, book a virtual session with you, but if they have to find you, like where can they find you? Um, so they can call, uh, they can find me. So like, yeah, right now I'm not doing the virtuals um, just for time restraints, but maybe I'll bring them back. We'll see. Um, yeah. But my website is suzycolor.com, like C-O-L-O-U-R, the Canadian spelling. And yeah, so they can like reach me through my website. I put it in the description, so it's not okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, through my website would be the best way. Wow. Thank you so much, Susan, for like joining and like just enlightening, oh. enlightening me over like this, like this new realm, I feel almost that I've oh. found. Oh, you know what? It's always so like fun and nice to talk to you, Pram. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much.